I've started the recording. No, the, the, the recorded frame rate will be locally perfect. Hi everyone, welcome to Carly's Creative Clay. I'm Carly Langridge. Um, got lots and lots to cover today, so I try and keep it at a faster pace. Um, at the moment, I think we've just got Fairy Hedgehog in the chat room, so we're on one viewer. Anyone who wants to see what I've been talking about if they come in later can always go back onto the YouTube video that I post up tomorrow why well, say I my gorgeous wonderful husband posts up tomorrow <clears throat> the charms that you see laid out here they are a new range that's going into my Etsy shop I shall be putting them in next week along with the pink dragon pink and purple dragon that I did on my previous streams um, everything has been a bit put behind because I've been feeling unwell and we've had a death in the family my aunt-in-law died last week so I'd like to dedicate this live stream to her her name's Nikki Mardell she was a wonderful woman went too soon but most people say that about people's deaths it's a big shame anyway these charms will be between 2 dollars and 4 dollars we have a little silver dragon we got a ladybird in a flower and there's eight of each of these other than the sloth which I'll get to so before I did a ladybird on its own, <clears throat> I think it looks better in a flower. Um, gold dragon, because you can't do silver without the gold. Now, this little guy is a kakapo, a New Zealand bird, but you can count it as a fat budgie. But if you've never heard of kakapos, Google search them. They are adorable. They're really, really intelligent and they are massively fun loving they like playing jokes on each other they do stuff purely for the fun of it they're awesome um they were made by a friend of mine so the kakapo range is a guest sculptor called yvette martin who came to stay with me for a week so we're now on hedgehog who i did have in my shop and sold out of but these, this range is slightly different. I've done different coloured spikes to the last time round. Um, I try to, each time I make a new batch of charms, I make them slightly different from any that I've done before. So we're now on a bear. Very cute. And I use some of the old pink scales from the dragon. I put them together and turn them into a faded heart slight metallic gold to the dragon i mix gold and brown and yellow in a swirl so that you've got a little bit more glint off him then we've got an elephant i on purposely did slightly big ears because i think it looks cute and i found some green crystals crystal beads and each elephant is holding a green crystal in his trunk then the leftover purple scales I turned into purple flowers and put a butterfly in it and the leaves on this one are more twisted <clears throat> the ladybirds are more flat then we've got a pig who has his face tilted slightly to one side little brown splodge on his back cute piggy curly towel I'm very pleased with them. Now, my favourite so far out of all the charms I've been making is this. My sloth. And it's a free toed sloth. I can't remember the name of it. I, th It's not the Bradipus. It might be the Bradipus. But, yes, it's a traditional sloth that people always use. And what I did was I used a 
stick of florist wire that I put a twist in for the loop so the whole of the branch that it's holding on to is actually got wire in it so it's very sturdy so they shall be in my shop over the next couple of days if you are interested in buying any now the sloths already sold one so there's only seven left of them they I will be putting a post up on my Facebook and Instagram letting you know when they're live in my shop okay so this is the start of a few more so you will, will be able to see more charms that I make over the next few weeks because my charm selection is pretty much on the low side now put them away the next thing to talk about with you that's a 50 pence piece for size guide um, next thing to talk about it's my birthday on the 30th of January and most people want to receive presents for their birthday I want to give some presents so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a competition seven of them in fact and I'm going to be covering the postage for it because I'm getting the postage as a birthday present so I'll be drinking a lot my throat's bad because there's so many I've actually had to write myself a note on all the different ones so let's do a quick talk through I will be putting a um, post up on my Facebook and on Instagram explaining these competitions and how what you need to do to enter and I will be making a short video of just that on its own and putting it over to YouTube but I wanted you all to have a first crack at it so I wanted to explain it to you all first so let's do this very briefly Facebook the two things you got you can win now I'm going to pick two winners two different winners so you've got the choice of either this pink flower with a yellow butterfly and nobody's got any of these this is the only one that I've ever made or a penguin with its flipper on its hip now in order to win one of these you need to like and follow my Facebook page my business page not my personal one you need to find an item on my Etsy shop something for sale that you like the most and share it on your Facebook and then under the post that I put on Facebook write either done or like or something like that to say that you've actually done all these and then I will do a random number draw on the 28th of February now I was going to do it all for the 30th of January but I thought I'd give you all a bit more time because I couldn't announce this all last week so these are your Facebook prizes then we're on to Instagram Instagram is guinea pig and turtle now it's the same thing for Instagram you need to like my business page find an item from my Etsy shop and post it to Instagram with a couple of hashtags then go to the post and say um, done and I will random draw from the list so guinea pig very cute with a turtle thank you I love my penguins I will show you how to make some of these one day um, then we are over to Twitter Twitter is pig in a sheep so again retweet my post or my wall or something from my Etsy shop and comment on my post done that you have done this and you're in the draw for one of these then lastly on the charms you've got my YouTube video which is an elephant 
and a duck charm. You've got to pick one of the videos that I've got up on my channel um, like that. If you want to like more, that is always helpful. Um, and you need to follow my YouTube. Ideally, I would also like you to share either a video on my YouTube channel, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, any of that lot. That also really helps. Um, and if you can comment under the video that I'll be making of this competition to say done and then you'll be in the draw for one of these two. So that's the charms. On that lot there'll be two draws, one for each charm for each of the different ones. So then we're on to the really good bits, the next tier up of prizes. This gorgeous butterfly can you see it's on a flower it's not there a charm a it's a no, statue no, oh. sorry there you can can you see it's Fairy Hedgehog wants to know uh, are you sharing the competition to elsewhere in the world oh yes my competitions I'm gonna actually make a post on Facebook Instagram Twitter I'm gonna make a video for YouTube as well so every on each of them I'll share all the different competitions so just because you read it on Facebook don't mean you can't join the Instagram one or whatever you can join any of them um, I would say as many times as possible but there's only so many times you, you can only like a page once so one per each of them and you're in for the draw so YouTube video no no done YouTube video wrong one YouTube live Instead of watching this stream through um, Twitch, if you come on, on my birthday, 30th of January, and you stay through the 30th of January's live feed all the way to the end, my admin will take a screenshot at the end of the stream, and all those that are logged in on YouTube will go into the draw for this. Um, it's a flower butterfly little model that I'm pretty pleased with then if you are on Twitch we have this beautiful orange dragon with red glitter highlights he's holding a flat crystal bead um, if you watch my live stream on Twitch on my birthday, the 30th of January, through to the end, we'll screenshot it and you'll go into the draw for this dragon. The last one, if you spend over a tenner in my Etsy shop until the end of February, so that's the 28th of February, so all the charms and this one is the 28th of February. These are the 30th of January. Right, over a tenner in my Etsy shop, you get a panda bear box. Now, as you can see, 15 quid. So you spend a tenner, you're in a chance to win something for 15 pounds and I'll pay the postage of this. On this one, you can enter as many times as you want, but it has to be over a tenner on each purchase not including your postage because if you if it's postage out of country it's going to be a lot of way over a tenner usually on some of the big items so you yeah 10 pounds uk what are we pound sterling so that's different for dollars and euros but you can do a conversion on the internet pretty easily so all of this is going to lots of lucky people i really hope that at least you go into one of them and you get a good chance of winning right let's stick this lot to one side and then we'll get on with the bit that you're actually interested in which is me claying so that's all this out to one side safely oops mr sheep right now for this week i 
wanted to make a competition entry. The British Polymer Clay Guild, which I'm a member of, they're holding, they hold a competition every month and they pick someone who fulfills a brief and you win something small. Well, this month they are making it a two month competition. So it's going for January and February and the prize is pretty awesome. Not only is it quite a large prize of clay and various tools, but they're also offering a um, entry into a magazine of your work and do an article about it. Um, I can't remember the name of a magazine, but it's quite a popular polymer clay one. So I got to be in for that. Now the brief for this is New Year, New You. That's right, isn't it? No, New Year, New Beginning. That was it. Sorry. New Year, New Beginning. I was a little, I found it difficult to work out what to do. And since we're into January, I'm done with New Year. Really am. That happened already. And I don't find that spectacular. I usually stay home for mine. So I thought I would focus on the new beginning side of things instead. And me being me, anyone who knows me, I'm going to go down an animal route because I like making animals and think they're all wonderful. So new beginning of animals. That means I get to work on baby animals. Woo! Cute baby animals. I like this. So what I thought I'd show you all is how I make my tea lights. Now, this is a previous tea light that I've done. That is a dragon with an egg and gold coins. This sort of setup is what we're going to do today. Now, I've done a stripe of varnish just to show off what my varnish looks like with this one. It's a teaching aid. So what we're going to do is a new beginnings tea light. So what I thought was if I did a blue to green fade instead of like on that one I've done a yellow to red then it will look like sky and grass which is a really good backdrop for me to put a load of animals on. So what I've got is I've conditioned up a load of clay there's about 38 grams on each although don't hold me to it I'm really not exact I tend to just grab off new clay when I run out but I got myself a little weighing scale so I'm actually able to tell you weights now which is always a good thing to have on your desk as a sideline new bits of tools I don't often get them but this week has been an awesome week because we're coming up to my birthday I got birthday money which is great so what I got you saw the holographic glitter I got last week I showed last session that my brother-in-law got me for Christmas it's inspired me to go through and get lots more holographic glitters so you will be seeing these in my work far more often now because glitter is awesome and holographic glitter is even more awesome so in the future you will be used the other thing I've got on order is a decent knife sharpener you can sharpen your tissue blades and stuff on the back of cups but it takes forever so I actually splurged and I've got a really good one coming so I'll show you that next week when it arrives the other thing now between you and me this has to probably be one of the best purchases I've made on eBay. I was stunned. It turned up today. Picture this. You spent £13, which isn't a lot of money, on a metal cake turntable so that when I work on things I can spin it round and see what I'm doing without having to keep picking it up and moving it. I thought I'd be getting a really small, tatty, pretty rubbish one. Look at this bad boy. It 
takes up more than the screen. Smooth, spin, absolutely silent. It's got a rubber mat, but the reason why you can take that off is so that you can put this whole thing in the oven. Isabel! <laughs> no, I was like, I was amazed. I'm sure there's more than £13 worth of material in it, let alone the manufacturing and profit margin. It's someone with a business model like what I've got. Because <laughs> I don't make much profit at all on the things I sell. If anything, I do make sure I cover my materials, but once I start covering my insurance, I would have to sell at such a high price you guys wouldn't buy a single thing from me hopefully I will develop and get to a point where I've got enough fan base that I can up my prices a little bit so that I'm at least making a little bit of profit but so far it's been pretty sucky but anyway that's my problem right tea light so let's start we're gonna make the blend so Skinner blend now, got my past machine, fold that open. I've seen people talking online on all the clay forums that I'm part of and they're talking about spending fortunes on pasta machines. I maintain that you don't need to spend more than £10 on a pasta machine. I know they come in hundreds of pounds and specifically designed for clay. I have been using this £10 one, what we are, my third year now? No problem. Yes, it's not got a huge drop to it. Yes, it's not got a motor. Some of the ones with motors are really loud. Like, sounds like you're starting a chain store up in your workroom. If you're gonna do it, just, just run your stuff through i've shown you and will show you again the easiest way to use a past machine without killing your arms off i don't think you need to spend the money on a motor i mean you can if you really want to find someone who can add a motor to a normal pasta machine but again i've got on perfectly well without it right with a skinner blend I've shown these many times on videos. You are making triangles with a flat top to it rather than a point. So one end needs to go into a point and the other side, all the bit that you've got flat is gonna remain that color and all the bit that you've got as a diagonal is gonna be a gradiated fade. Now, it's not that pretty, it's not even, it's just the rough shape that you need. And then you get your next colour, I'm going to do my green, and you're doing the same thing but the other way around. Now people do Skinner blends where they put the triangles going, so you've got that triangle there, then there'll be another one there to make it into a rectangle, and then they put another triangle and another triangle and you can blend in many colors two colors is the easiest but you can do more <sighs> hair on my clay already my cat the other day finally got allowed into my workroom finally it's been like months that we've had this new room fixed up and he's not been allowed in at all and he lost his bloody mind. He felt that he was going to jump up and onto my work desk whilst I'm claying. And I was working with white clay at the time. At the best of times, white clay, you kind of need a hazmat suit just to keep the dust off it. Let alone having a big old ginger orange Tom come and sit himself straight on the middle of it all. I went mad. He went out ain't got no time for that he's got a decent sized house because I live with my in-laws couldn't afford this place on my own it's it's a nice house 
but he is not hard done by for space. He does not need to be getting onto my clay surface. Charlie is... Oh, welcome, welcome. Asking, but is warning us that um, we're dropping frames. I know we're dropping frames. My wonderful techie I'm husband sure is trying to do something. Someone has done it on purpose because we have been... The, the dropped frames percentage usually goes up or down depending on the stressed element. In this case, it has been locked at 65%, or in other words, two thirds, for the entire time we've been streaming. Someone is just throwing away two thirds of the frames, and I don't know who. Someone has, how is that a thing? It's either our internet provider, Restreamio, or Twitch. Probably our internet provider, but I don't, I can't. Pin it. <sighs> Why they feel the need to do things like this? Um, we will play around with it over the week and see if we can work out what it is and fix it. But we already started streaming late because we were attempting to fix it up. I'm very, very annoyed with whoever's doing this. But the YouTube video at the end should look all right. The recording. So if it looks too wonky today, you can pick it up tomorrow once I repost it. Right, little bit of stuck off the end, so I'm going to trim that down. Right, do you see we have two triangles with a flat bit? Yeah, I think I might need a bit more green out there. There we go. Right. This is going through the pasta machine. You put the lightest colour to the left, always, and it helps you remember. Because if you, you've got to run it through several times, and if you put it through like that, and then put it through like that, it's going to have the colours smudged where you don't want it, basically. Right, I'm on the thickest setting. And let's put it through i know i'm putting through a huge chunk here but we're gonna need a large amount to get the um enough to cover the tea light and not make it tiny oh, it's gonna need a bit of a fair old push the first time through because it's taking something very thick Now they do do clamps to clamp your pasta machine to the desk. I have got one here, but I find that I fidget mine around too much to be doing with that. You can then turn it to face you and get it at an angle that you like. Sometimes if I've got something too hard to push through, I will stand up. So you've got all the leverage. And if you see, I'm pulling through, pushing down to the bottom and then taking it out and going up to the top so that you're not trying to pull up, you're using gravity to help you. Right, let's, before it comes out, let's do that. So you don't want it to fold on itself and stick. There we go. There we are. So that first one's always the toughest. You've got a nice big sheet with your point. Right, let's move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. I don't know if you've noticed, we have changed the camera angles. It's top downwards now rather than facing back to front the way it was before. It's thanks to a lovely new gadget we've got that helps clip the camera in a different place so what I'm doing is I'm trying to make sure that I give myself enough blue and green on either side can you see the blue starts there and the green starts there so there is some of each color solid and there's enough for a fade if you don't line your lines up properly then you end up with a really weird Skinner blend it does a very odd fade some of the people who do this a lot 
they say you shouldn't fold more than once one fold through the pasta machine and keep doing that I find you can do more than one on this I folded it over twice and I'm just pushing the sides so that it doesn't spread out width wise more than I want I'm keeping it under control so that's a bit more manageable to go through so we get a pasta machine back remember lightest to the left darkest to the right you push it down and make sure that the, all the clay is connecting with the rollers if there's a little bulge you will find as you pull it through that'll be far more pronounced and harder to fold back up I do see if you've got very weak arms trying to use a manual pass machine can be difficult and I know I'm in a lot of pain today I've got fibromyalgia um, and my normal pain relief has run out I'm just sorting it out um, so it can be very challenging on your arms all of clay work they do do soft ranges so they need less work but I find the soft ranges are very very sticky and I just can't make anything from them properly it's just too much trouble when I first started playing I couldn't even pick up a pencil my arms were that weak it was awful I started to try and get myself some more strength in my arms and I'm amazed that it has worked physiotherapy is better to do when you're doing something fun rather than something that you're just seeing as work but if I look like a hot sweaty mess I'm really sorry because I am a bit of a hot sweaty mess because I'm painful right we keep going through doing this fade so this is going to take probably two or three passes through I know some people who say they like to pass it through 30 to 40 times I ain't got time for that I'm too impatient I know you get a very beautiful fade that has absolutely no um, colour that isn't gradiated in properly it can get a bit streaky before it works but I find it doesn't often take that many times through for me it helps if you are you have your pasta machine a lot thinner than the actual clay is if it's only slightly then you're only really mixing the surface colour and you've got to pass it through a whole lot more than you would if you used it on a slightly smaller notch but most people don't try to blend up this level of clay that's a lot of clay I'm trying to do a Skinner blend all at once which is a little bit nutty of me I could do it in two batches and then join it afterwards but again I'm impatient and I need just to get it done you don't want to sit there watching me knock up many batches so when I've got this Skinner blend together the basic pot shape that I'm going to be making that has a lot of applications to it because it is literally the basic pot if you want to make trinket boxes or bowls it's very similar stuff now you can lay it over a form so get a bigger bowl lay it over the outside push Darth it into shape hi. oh hi Darth bra hope you're all having a great day welcome welcome sorry we're dropping frames sorry we're dropping frames we have done a lot to try and work out why we will have it sorted for next week hopefully we we're going to be restarting modems routers and everything 
yay don't you just love having a day planned out that is fixing computer problems it's almost as good as doing your taxes i hope you have all any of you with live business um self-employed businesses that you've done your taxes already can you see we're just starting to get that fade it's only slight but it's happening couple more through and we'll be there I am lucky my taxes are pretty simple but even so I have to get help from people because um, I'm numerically dyslexic and the chronic fatigue causes a lot of brain fog I have trouble with numbers and it can bring a lot of interesting challenges to my business so half the time when I order things I don't really have that much idea of what size they're gonna be find out when they turn up and just make it work that kind of stuff so when people I've had people ask before can you make me something that's exactly this height or that height and I'm like I can do it roughly but the problem is trying to make sure that all the bits are the correct size in order to actually end up with a finished model of an exact height that is so complicated especially the first time I have found I have been able to do it before but I've had to make about five or six practice models which that's a lot of money and time I see people who can who do sort of miniature work especially for dolls houses and they do exact um, percentage smaller than the real thing and I'm like you guys are wizards so hats off to anyone who can do precise clay work like that I can't I think people who do miniature work are wizards anyway um, I have done some pretty miniature miniature work for this already what I've decided to do over the last few days I have been making the bits that I'm going to decorate the outside of this tea light with so you don't have such a long video um, I did consider making this Skinner blend and have it ready made just to show you guys and thought that that's too much like a just put it together type thing rather than actually show you any of the process but I had to use um, the various magnifying glasses that I've got almost there I say one more pass through and we're there with that fade can you see it's very subtle with a green blue fade but we're almost there I'm going to give it one more go through then we're on to the interesting bit of turning a sheet of clay into a tea light so yes I made the outside design bits and there's not really a lot of instruction I can give you with that because it's so small it's all you see are big very thick chunky fingers if I could I would have shrunk my fingers down over the last few days because I don't understand how people can make something tiny tiny with these big chunky sausages that you got and I've got a very decent tool set up here and even with that I found it challenging but my tip for model making the first thing you've got to get your head around when you decide you're going to start making things is looking at something and breaking it down into its simplest shape so it so, they like the new camera thank you I like the new camera angle it needs it so much um, 
so for instance a cat's head it's a round circle for the head triangles for the ears a triangle for the nose tiny little sausages for the mouth and a leaf shape for the eyes if you do nothing else spend time every day pick an object and see whether you can break it down into its shape in your mind once you start getting used to that you will find that it's far easier to create right let's get this pasta machine out of the way we've got an end result all right i'm doing a stack of metal stuff next to me because i've just put it on my cake machine right so what we need that is going to be too tall for a tea light the way to shrink it down is when it's in its thickest state so i may actually need to get the pasta machine back if i wind up too thick but we're now going to start to try first off to get the height that we want you can do this by cutting clay off either side which i may do a bit of but i want to keep the amount i've got so what i'm doing is once i've got it thick can you see i'm just pressing it and then you pinch and pull out so you're persuading it that it wants to go in that way and out that way and the joy of clay is that it normally agrees with you and does what you want pretty simply fold it over so you don't end up with a concertina folder which is annoying to try and get back out of your clay when i first tried to do this i didn't make sure that i wasn't just folding the clay into a zigzag behind and well let's just say that was one of those ones where it it couldn't go in the shop but i learned a lot from it so let's work out some height really it doesn't matter what height your tea lights at but you want to be able to really get your fingers in to put the tea light in the other thing i would say is i don't trust polymer clay with a naked flame what i use are the little led tea lights like this so you've got a little light for it you can get 10 pack of these for a pound and process, that looks lovely, so. thank you so i supply all my tea lights actually with an led one so then you're doing your bit to making sure that people are safe with the things you buy so I'm now getting to work on the thickness of it so I'm just using a rolling pin to bring it out you don't want it too thin because you want it to be able to hold its shape it's better to take off the height than to take off the thickness if that makes sense so bring it thinner and out right I would say that looks reasonable there we go pretty thick pretty smooth now so this is let's trim up the ends to make it flat so that you can join it properly so what I do is take off the small bit each side then I use my knife blade down obviously and you're going to push the clay against the blade in order to get a straight edge on it so you're not cutting off tons of clay to make it level does that make sense see just like that we're all smooth and looking pretty it amazes me every time how quickly you can go from a mess 
to something that looks like you actually planned it to look which is quite a achievement really take a little bit more off to flatten that there we go right so we've now got our sides so when that goes round that's what it's going to look like that will be the size of the tea light now the first thing I'm going to do I might bring it out a little bit more there we go is I'm going to stamp out some holes now what I want to try and do is I want to try and make some trees so what I've got is some dot stampers what they are you get them in the clay world they're only a couple of quid they're different holes and different sizes of circular holes and they go all the way down to exceptionally small you need to get a tool and push the clay out if you want to keep the dot rather than the hole that it creates so what I'm gonna do I'd say I want to split this into four and I'm just going to do a very faint mark sorry that's my husband okay. opening a bottle of cola kind of a cola ad addict yes. for all the addictions you can have I suppose that's quite a cheap one right roughly quarter divide so what I'm going to do is get a big one and a slightly smaller one and I'm going to make some leaf sh sort of tree shapes so the cap that's the word I was looking for canopy so I'm going to do a on the line so about there like that whoop see now getting scruffy but you again I can tidy this up I just need to push the clay through there we go now again don't chuck this clay away you'll end up with a really decent till at the end of it a green blue till till anyway with my cottony accent it's till which sounds like what you check out shopping at rather than the colour soz there we go let's do another little stamp there that looks kind of like the canopy of a tree then I'm going to get a blade and cut out a little trunk now once you have oops that broke but you can smush it back in and smooth it all back so even though it looks scruffy that's what a palette knife was invented for so it's better to get the shape and then smooth out later now you don't want whatever design you decide for your holes you don't want them to be too big because it will make it structurally unstable so I'm making a very little tree shape smooth that out smooth that out there we go right that's one now it looks scruffy I am going to tidy it up at a later date let's bring that back over here Ooh, it really is scruffy on this side so let's do this I'm going to use my edge of my ball tool to smooth out the and make it look better there we go that looks a bit better then the smaller side there we are I know it's fiddly and you can pick any shape you want for the light to come through but because I'm doing a bit of a natural one I wanted to go for something I was deciding between tree and bush and I thought tree would look better there we go 
right I've decided this is going to be my front so let's do another one over here so go like this stamp out twist round there you go you get a smoother if you spin it push the clay out there we are so I hope everyone's had a good week mine has been a bit crazy um, I didn't expect my aunt-in-law to die she was um, well at the time so it was very sudden and unexpected which is sad but thank you it's looking scruffy to me but it won't at the end especially once I've smoothed it all out properly there's a lot of work still to go where's my smaller hmm it's amazing that there it is you can take things out and they still go missing the thing is where this is green and I'm working with green clay easy to miss it here we go one more over here and then I'm going to put some tree um, stumps my English is not good today one of the problems with chronic fatigue syndrome is your mind goes, um, it's like thinking through cotton wool. They call it foggy. So words that you know very, very well and used all your life, your brain goes, no, you don't need that. It's Dark fine. Says, That's so mad. I didn't expect that to look too effective. I know. There is so many things that look very effective that you think ain't going to do a thing. There's many times where I thought, something that I made was absolutely rubbish unsavable and lo and behold half an hour later it looks like I had no problems at all and it absolutely perfect well that's the thing that I'm trying to sort out I since I've been sharing these live streams especially with polymer clay groups which I had, I'm a part of at least six of them the feedback I've had so far from many people is that they're used to um, having clay projects done in three minutes time it's a very very smooth edited piece where you're practically just watching them assemble what they've made and takes no time at all some of them have got over a hundred videos and not a single bit of talking in any of it it's all just a nice little plinky plunky music watching them assemble well that's not the reality of being an artist and even those that have been at it for many years like I have we have mistakes we have scruffy times we have things come out that look where you're like i'm gonna have to bin this it's gonna be absolutely rubbish i fixed the frame drops Woo, what's wrong with the frame drops i'll tell you later the audience wants to know it was google um backup drive thing was uploading an iso image i'd made of an sd card but it was <laughs> doing it in the first mode so it would upload and then re-download it to check it was huh. the right thing so it was using both the upstream and the downstream at a well interesting saturated at the maximum speed that we can use right so it was doing it in bursts and so it was taking up two-thirds of the connection which is why we were dropping two-thirds google of gotta love google it does the most amazing things some of them you even want them to do right so we got free stamped out that's a good start point if you think your clay is too stuck to the board use your blade to release it you don't want to make it too scruffy now let's get this all out of the way because the next thing we're going to do whoop, turn it over 
check that you ain't got any extra bits of clay that are meant to come off stuck to the inside of your soon to be tea light now we need to make a base for for it now i'm going to take off some green clay that would be enough perfect says it sounds very making a pot can be especially since um i'm putting fades and cutouts and all sorts of wonderful things like that when people generally just knock a pot together but fully structuring your the thing you're making if it's a pot or a bowl or things most people tend to just um use use a bowl or a pot they've already got and lay the clay over it and as a form and then bake it actually making it stand alone completely like this there isn't a lot of um, people doing it in the clay world in the real clay world but polymer clay not so much so got a base and what you're going to do is you're going to wrap it around and you've got to make sure you securely join at the sides you're going to push in at the bottom and push in at the side now that's what i need to do get yourself a towel make you make life easier for yourself whack it on that then you can move it around without having to free it up all the time so i'm making sure that i've got each side so that it isn't wonky i have done that where i've not matched the two sides properly there we go that looks roughly right now i'm going to put my hand on the outside to support and use a palette knife and smudge sideways to join that line can i make a suggestion mm -hmm. push it slightly further away from you if i do that oh yeah no but that might help yeah. so you can see that join line and I'm just smoothing along the inside you can put a little dot of okay I can't see if doing that you can put a little string of clay so one of your off cuts you can literally get your blade like that so don't throw them away and mix them up if I got that and line that along that join and then you smooth it in asks, how do you get the walls to be the right size for the base right eyeball it is a good way the other thing you can do is you can get a bit of string lay it along the bottom edge cut it so it's the same length as the sides and then use that to form a circle and that will be the right width that's how I used to start doing it. But now I've made enough of them that I can kind of eyeball it. So this is the bit that is the technical. It's the hardest bit is making sure that you can make this join line disappear. And you always start on the inside and then do the outside because the inside will give it structural stability without being the most obvious bit and i can already see once i've got this fully joined in i'm going to need to go back over the bits that i've cut out and make sure that they're not distorted into a way that i don't like now you can use palette knives on it to do the whole job but i think using your fingers works better because you can do a sort of smudge and a press people won't notice if the thickness of the pot is uneven in different bits so if you've got a thinner bit and a thicker bit people just really look at the outside shape so as long as it's not too different all the way around you should be able to have some working room right i can still see a few lines there 
So I'm going to use... Sorry. It looks like we forgot to mute the telephone. Who knew? So, techie admin, can you mute the telephone, please? Take it out of the room. That'll work. Right, can you see now that inside... Let's get some light on it. There we go. That inside line has now vanished by smudging it around then you can go and work on the top the top is easy you just bring it together and do palette knives are useful things they tend to leave tiny cracks behind but you can use your fingers to smooth those out but the very big ones palette knife helps there we go that's a good start oops I've got a join line there then we're on the outside and again smudge the line so that you can't see it now again you can use a small thin sausage of clay to bridge over the gap of the line if you're finding that it's not smudging out properly I'm sure smudging is not a proper word it is in my world there we go bring it through bring it through so it's already looking pretty done and it's um what have I been at it for my clock says five past six is that right because that means I've only been at this for five minutes and I've already got a tea light, which is pretty awesome, really. Um, keep your tissue to one hand. Make sure that you wipe your blade regularly or you're going to have colours like I've done there. I've got green on my blue. I'll show you what to do about that in a minute once I've got this line to disappear which it will it just takes a bit of fiddling with um, traditional clay it's a lot easier to take out join lines but this is exactly what they do when you when they're making a pot that's not been thrown on a wheel they do this solid sheet going round thing that I'm doing here right there we go that by jove looks like i've done it now we ain't finished with the structural work yet we just need to go through and make sure our trees still look like trees so i'm going to use my ball tool just to smooth them in where i can see bits that don't look right there we go bring you up that looks more like a tree they worked out what the pot, pot reminds them of. It's the mystery machine from Scooby Doo. <laughs> the mystery. Okay, here's a little secret. I've watched about ten episodes of Scooby Doo throughout my entire life. I found the whole lot of them proper annoying. They are so inept. Ah, the 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 van. See, if you said the van, I would have got that. Yes. Green and blue. Who knew they were a common colour theme? There we go. Right. We are looking perfect. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Everything's smoothed through. There we go. Now, if you've got clay that is smudged in the wrong place, colours where you don't want them, anything like that, rubbing alcohol let's have a look this is a 70 percent i would say try and go for the highest percent alcohol as you can what alcohol does is it takes off the very thin top layer of your clay it melts it people say you can use nail varnish remover i have tried and found that it's hit or miss. Some nail varnish removers don't have enough alcohol in it. 
So if what you're achieve, trying to achieve from your nail varnish remover is an alcohol content, then you might as well just get rubbing alcohol. I would say it's cheaper, but it's not. It's roughly about the same price. I'm going to be finding ginger cat hairs for the rest of this week at least. Why didn't we get a Rex cat again? You know the little bald ones that look like Gollum? Mind you, I know someone who's got one of them and they still shed hairs. It's just smaller and finer ones. There we go. Get that green off. Because it looks odd to have green in your sky. Now, still we are not structurally sound yet. There is more we got to do. And that's working on the join around the base. What you got to do is you make up either one long small sausage to go around the inside edge if your sausage clay breaks that's fine you're not going to see it it doesn't have to be perfect but what it's going to do is it's going to push into that join line and help secure it together when you don't do this you end up with it doesn't stick properly you've got a very structurally unstable pot by doing it so it's the difference between a pot that's made well and a pot that isn't what well, one of the differences and I just use a tool and I'm putting it into the edge and I'll show you once I've got it in place come on don't stick there we go now anything will push it through into the edge you don't have to have the ball tools that I've got for this stage but you are going to need a ball tool of some description to smooth it in so a little bit more there but I've seen people use tweezers to do this tough process I went around a friend's who had cats the other day and I left covered oh it was in my hair on my clothes I spat out a fur ball two days later <laughs> <laughs> it's so true I really think they have a bag full of extra fur that when you go to bed at night they get the bag out and just sprinkle it liberally I'm on orange juice help with this virus right can you see along that join line there is that little bead of clay yeah all the way around I'm going to get this ball tool and I'm going to push that clay into that join so that it's in firmly and you can't see it. Now I tend to go for one that's slightly too big to do the initial push in and then go for a smaller one to take out the lines. So it will be completely invisible, but it's really important. Then after this, it's a bit of juggling. And it, because what you need to do is smooth out the join in the bottom of the pot. Um, let's talk how to make this thing structurally stable through baking whilst I'm doing this. You can fill this area up with tin foil, but what you'll find if you scrunch a board tin foil and put it in is you're going to get all the markings from the tin foil show up indent in your clay and it will not be a smooth inside. If it's thick enough, you can bake it without anything inside it to hold its shape. But if you're doing a thin one, you're definitely going to need something. Now my advice is this because I may not have to do it with this because it's thick enough to hold its own sides pretty well is you get grease proof paper, baking paper you're going to cut a circle for the base and you just put your clay on it and cut it and then you're going to want to lay a rectangle that is the length all the way around for the sides so that it's all the inside is covered then what you do is you fill it up with dried rice so 
doesn't matter what kind out of the bag you empty the whole lot in fill it up you can use baking beads but rice is cheaper and it will fill up the space the greaseproof paper will stop it marking the inside and it will and it doesn't burn in the oven and once you're you've got your pot out you just upend it back into a bag once it's cooled and you can reuse it doesn't matter what kind of rice obviously no flavorings on it because who knows what they would do in the oven some plain rice who knew that rice was a clayer's friend hmm now that bit isn't laying right there we go I still think my hands are my best tools right going around with the ball tool inside let's show you how that looks can you see I worked out all the marks so you don't notice such a sharp angled join line and it's stronger now so we're going to flip this upside down I think I'm going to need a blade to release so let's show you how to release do not push in front of you going away from your body it's not stable you hold your whatever you want to release from a board you put it in front of you hold your blade behind it blade side down and you pull with one motion you can wiggle a bit if you think it will help towards you see like that now, underneath looks scruffy and scrappy you can leave it like that now what I tend to do whilst that's in the bag I'm gonna put some rice in just to give me some firmness so I don't end up accidentally crushing the pot there we go that's the good thing about rice it forms into the space very well come on in there any marks that we leave behind we can all smooth out afterwards but it means that you can turn it upside down when it does what you're asking it to properly and get to the base properly and then I just literally use my palette knife and smooth that line in like that you're pulling the outside edge towards the middle of the circle and again you can put a bead in there if you aren't using rice the other option let's take this out is you use your fingers to shore up so I'm doing laying my fingers like that on the inside and going round and pushing only where my fingers are so I move my fingers so you're not pushing on an unsupported bit because if you do you'll just buckle the whole pot now the reason why there is hay now on the outside of that which I've got to take off I keep guinea pigs in my bedroom and my guinea pig cage used to have a whole lot of hay it's got some fleece line into it now and um, I used to have to clay from my bed because I just wasn't well enough to even sit up here I still clay from my bed a lot just like a dinner tray on my lap with my clay project and Hearty, hearty life live says hi Carly. Hi, welcome. I hope you're all having a good week. I'm making the entry for the British Polymer Clay Guilds competition. It is looking scruffy as all hell at the moment, but it will end up looking pretty smart once I've got the structural bits out of the way. So as you can see I'm just going around and smoothing it down it doesn't matter that it's not entirely smooth so long as you get that join line to vanish once you push it down back onto the tile that'll get all these 
little ridge markings that the palette knife is causing there we go right back down now get its shape back and you're going to push the whole of the base back onto your towel to smooth it out and because I didn't check whether there's any hay on that I'm going to need to just take off the last the few bits of hay that ended up on my clay <sighs> pets huh who'd have them right there we go now if you didn't want such a sharp edge to the bottom if you wanted it to round you can pick it up and just carve the corners off but that's not what I'm aiming for on this I want it to look quite stable and stocky almost yeah I'm definitely gonna need to get some rubbing alcohol and strip off that top bit because it's now got all sorts of dust and stuff like that because I haven't used that bag of rice in a while but rubbing alcohol gets rid of so many sins because it really doesn't ruin your work it just strips off such a small amount the other option is to leave it bake it and then sand it that will also strip off stuff but for any interested for time saving I will clean that up properly off camera so things to add to the outside because we have now a stable tea light so new beginnings baby animals is what I'm aiming at hmm I am definitely gonna tidy up the holes this is what I made over the last week we have let's bring it up to the camera some baby squirrels and it's adults need to move more towards me up a bit right that comes off the camera we're looking at these down here baby animals so baby squirrels are those three we've got some little tiny rabbits with their slightly bigger parents we have sheep and a couple of lambs ducks with their ducklings some birds a bird's nest sun and some clouds yep that's on that tray on this one this one's background we have lots of little flowers which was the most fiddly thing to do I did a little blob of clay and then I got my needle tool and just pushed in the lines and did a dot on them and this is some greenery that's going to go around the pond so the first thing to show is how to make the pond water I've been promising this for a while now I will show you how to make up my swirly clay that I do so let's show you now get some blue so this is my drawer of blues I have a unit on my desk of clays that I've mixed up now I only need a small bit of each colour this is what I'm going to be making uh, sorry here we go a swirly water looking clay right what we need are sticks of our blues so let's roll that out into a relatively thick sausage now don't break there we go like that that do you want some different colours to it so that it stands out properly they're very similar like this was a very similar mix can you see the blues are not really showing up so well in it 
you still got a bit of swell to it but it's not as obvious so I'm going to do make sure that I've got a few different colors well tones <sighs> my head's really not with it today it just shows you how dedicated I am to you all that even when I'm not at my best I'm still here making sure that I'm streaming and it's going to take a lot for me to not stream I've got to be excessively ill right we need kind of a light blue let's mix some light blue and some white where's my white drop there we go a bit of white so we get down some very 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 light and I'm probably going to put some silver in as well so you can mix your colors up if it doesn't come because there is quite a range of colors that your polymer clay comes in on most of the brands I think there is one that just does the um, primary colors but all the top brands like FIMO and Sculpey there's quite a range of them but if there isn't the exact one you want you can mix so as you can see what I'm doing and again this is something that never gets shown on camera of people mixing up a colour but it's part of the job it's part of doing it you're gonna have some tedious bits some bits that go wrong it's all normal and even those that are quite highly regarded as celebrities in the clay world believe you me they have things go wrong they it doesn't look as perfect and polished as some of the films that they put out would make you believe but where's my silver that's purple purple oh turns out i've got a lot of purple made up see this is the problem with assuming stuff you think you've got some right to hand don't look and then have to go dig through your clay box Copper, what? right whilst i'm here i want to tell you there are different types of clays that aren't color based so you can get translucent you can get glow in the dark got it silver and you can get metallics and you can get pastels so as well as color differences you can get bigger differences like this i've not used any of the glow in the dark clay but i know people who have and who say it's amazing right yeah glow in the dark sounds really fun if they made it so that it wasn't just the sort of neon yellowy kind of glow if it was able to glow in different colors then i'd be totally there i'd be making all sorts of things from it but i have to limit what i do there's only so much material i can get before i'm drowning under material and have too much to actually make anything because i can't find it all because it's all all stuff my mum did that kind of she had a lot of craft material more than you could ever use in a lifetime and that turned out to be the case i don't understand how people have the kit for several different crafts literally i stick to polymer clay and i've got shelves and shelves and shelves of tools right what you're doing is you're twisting the clay together so you want to go for quite a tight twist you can either do two sticks together like I've done here make sure you if it snaps just join it back on make sure you twist right the way up to the end because you can end up with these long non-twisted bits and you don't want it 
that will leave you a blob of colour rather than a swirly one. The other option, so you're either doing two sticks together twisted or you can do three stacked up in a little pyramid which I'll do with the next one. So any more than three colours you make a new twist stick. They're all going to end up going together anyway. But you don't want to go too, too um, wide or it won't twist together properly. You'll end up with one colour as a sort of almost stick through the middle of a twist and it doesn't make a swirl pattern properly. So again, see why we've got to make sure we twist at the end, how it just lays as a stick. So. Hearty, hearty, light, light. So like that. Well, I guess you know what you want to do. I've been flitting about trying to find what suits me. I can totally understand that. I was lucky. The thing is, this is the only craft that's worked for me. I've tried painting, um, applique, sewing, drawing. Right, you're putting the two sticks together. Now, if you've got, again, if you've got multiples, you want to do no more than three of these. This, that first one, of course, stage one twist. When you put more than one stick, one twisted stick together, I call that a stage two twist. So you can do a third one on top, but if you've got more, you just do several of these. So you're twisting them together like that. Twisty, twist, twist, twist. Make sure the middle hasn't got too thick. Make sure that the edges are actually swirling. There you go. You, if you've got lots of them, you put them together and twist them as many as you need to. I have made blocks of swirly clay that were that sort of size out of hundreds of them. You just go up for as many as you need. You fold it in half at the middle and then you twist again. Now, when you're doing this twist, your, what is that, fourth stage? you're pushing towards the middle rather than trying to bring it out because it's going to go in half and you're going to keep twisting until you wind up with something that looks roughly like a ball then that goes smoothed out now here's some things i learned the outside of the ball you're going to make will look different to the inside. If you stop at this stage, I'll show you the inside of this, you get a very chunky sort of camo print. That's I do do that, but that's not my favorite. What I generally do at this stage is bring it out into another sausage you don't want to take it too too thin that you're not seeing the separate colors so about that is what i do then you hold one end still and you're going to roll the other one so that it all twists up again into a spiral and again you take the end make sure the spiral goes all the way to the tip on both sides see and like before in half twist in half twist keep doing it until you get down to your little ball again now the outside looks very very streaky this sort of streaky lined look is pretty in and of itself you can roll that out flat and have like a very big long straight lines what I find and what I do all the time is I want the design that's on the inside so I turn this ball into a square by pushing on the sides like that 
doesn't have to be a perfect one just a rough one now where did i put my tissue blade here it is you're going to cut the outside layer off so thin bit that's what it looks like inside oops down this way there can you see it's far more swirly let's bring it up there yeah it's a liney swirly so you're cutting the outside off this isn't going to be wasted keep it to one side outside off of all of it you've got to trim around the whole cube now this is the sneaky bit that brings all that clay you've chopped off back into use you're going to get the clay the design that's on the inside the swirly pattern you're going to put it back on with the outside facing inwards like that I have never found in using this and I use it a huge amount I've never cut back through and found that design in theory it's possible but in reality you ain't ever gonna find it again so even though it looks scruffy just adding them back on like that you smooth the ball back out then you will find the whole of your clay has that design through it there we go that's probably clear enough you see it's all the way through and wherever you cut it will have that design through it so that's how I'm making my pond let's move my drawer of blues back in there we go now so what side am I going to put my pond on tweezer another cat here he's so on the naughty set someone is not getting his dreamies tonight <sighs> the amount of times I've used tweezers to just save me from these sorts of things is unbelievable I reckon this is going to need a sand anyway so I'm going to flatten this out so that it looks like a pool of water oops onto the camera there we go like that I think that would do it that's possibly too much there let's cut that in half and I will use the other one for another project round that out a bit there we go once you've got the shape you want we now have our first bit of design on the outside so shall we put the ducks on first or the plants it doesn't make much difference and I've got a feeling I'm not going to use everything that I've got on these trays let's put some plants on so I'm going to put it up on its side like this oops I found a bit of a smooth outline needing to work on I'm going to just lift up some plants and put them around the outside of my pond assuming they come off there we go that's better so like that Oop. there we are now some green furnish looking ones Eeps. there we are like that because you don't generally get ponds that don't have plant life around it that's a thing that tends to happen there we go right some plants around the pond let's pick you up 
so already we have plants now put my plants out of the way and let's stick some ducklings and ducks on it bring you back bring the tray with ducks now I am going to use my blade just to lift up any that are stuck now I've got a mother duck with a duckling under her wing let's see can I get you to see it see the the little yellow that's actually a tiny tiny duckling that the camera actually isn't showing up really well but it's there tiny duckling looking up at her I've got one let's see can I get this to focus there we are it's a pair of legs Sorry, so the water line goes there and you've got a pair of legs and a bum up in the air so that so one I is a says, duck diving uh, okay, half your life, like, says, if you don't try different things you might miss out on discovering a great passion or super talent that I'll be referencing earlier and very hedgehog says pretty wow that's so clever thank you so I'm just chucking on a couple of ducklings and another duck I th I know I probably will find other crafts that I'm good at but I can't afford the materials for them or the tools or any of that if I come into some money I might start trying other t other crafts but at the moment I'm massively in love with this one so which is a, a big step on from what I was which was I used to believe I couldn't do anything crafty now let's see can I get some light on that there we go so we got ducks and ducklings next to a cut out tree so we're on to the next patch and we're gonna put some sheep on that So, question is, shall I put the squirrels and rabbits together or shall I put one with the sheep? So, I've got sheep, rabbits and squirrels. Do they, which order, two of them need to go together and one of them need to go on their own? I'm thinking squirrels and rabbits and then sheep in the other section. But I'm not certain. Now, I am going to put the little flowers on. But I want to make sure that I've positioned the main animals. And that they've got room for them. Before I put in the extras. Because I want them to be in the right place. So, first sheep with her lamb that's upside down this way around there we go sheep and lamb and then I'm going to whoops get the next sheep and lamb on let's bring you over here go sheep and I'm going to need to use a blade to pick the lamb up without damaging it. There we go. Let's put a lamb there. There we are. Now remember you can attach raw clay to baked clay so if you wanted to bake the pot and then put the other stuff on you can do that but I prefer actually adding raw clay to raw clay if I can get away with it because it's easier it bonds a lot firmer hmm so how about what should we put shall we do 
the bird's nest and next to the sheep and then put the rabbit and squirrels together let's rabbit and squirrels that side because then we can come back to the other bit in a second so as you can see it all goes on pretty quick once you've got that major pot done and you can make a lid for it and make it not a tea light make it a actual pot you can use this basic idea on so many different projects the the basic pot shape really is a good staple thing to learn for clay but it doesn't seem to be used very much in polymer clay weirdly enough the thing that gets mostly made from polymer clay is jewellery and yeah it's good it's just I don't wear much jewellery so I'm not that inspired by it I also find it's such a small amount of working space that by the time you've really made anything it's you've got very little space to put anything and I rather make bigger things that I can actually load up and make a full scene out of so now I put the rabbits on up this way there we go so we got Blue Hedgehog says those sheep are adorable a pair of rabbits good. and another little lot knocking around down there can you see them properly yeah there we are some rabbits then we're over here for a pond with ducks and then we're on to sheep now I think my squirrels are going to go in there so let's get them put in over on that side you see why I've added the main animals and then I'm going to put the flowers in the spaces afterwards if I did it the other way around you may find that you don't have enough room but you can layer up anyone that came in a bit later to my post or to this live stream I have earlier on announced a whole load of competitions I'm doing for my birthday so if you're interested in any of those I will be putting a film out for it. Says, those ducks am dead of the cute <laughs> I know you wouldn't have been if you saw me making them there was a whole lot of swear words that's why I made them off of camera because ain't nobody want to watch a cockney swearing for an hour or so trying to make ducklings they're so small and fiddly they really are not an easy thing to do I don't get how anyone makes miniatures as their only thing I would be so stressed out and I ain't no fun stressed out so you don't want that no one wants to watch it so I did it off camera and did all my cussing then right now we got a little pair of squirrels to put on like that let's see can I get you to come off? There we are. Put you running along the top there. Here we go. I know that weren't on camera, but if I tried to make it so that you could see it, I would have just messed it all up. And one last squirrel eating a flower down the bottom there. So we have that way up this squirrel family on and that little one there eating a flower so that's all the sides covered we have the top to do I will come back I promise with 
and put some flowers on. I did do a fence line and a little and a hedge. So a little fence and a little hedge. Fence gate, wooden gate, that's what I meant. Looking at it, I don't want to I was gonna put it around the sheep, but I don't think I've got enough room. I do I often the things you see in my shop they have been extras made for them that never made it onto the piece because I'm always doing this make too much and use it for something else rather than don't make enough it's my motto right I want this to go a little more round so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the clouds and birds going to the sky and around the top edge so let's Get the sun off first i think would be a good way to start this so lift that up and as you can see i've done the swirly pattern again on the center of the sun and i went over with some gold mica powder on the sticks coming out the sun i'm just going to push that on so we've already got a sun there like that And I'm going to put the clouds evenly spaced around the edge. So, like that. I'm just slightly overlapping the actual sides, so they're not completely just on the rim because i don't want them to go too high up some of the that cloud in particularly is quite tall so you can sit it all on the rim but i prefer not to right so we have clouds now on because to me i'm in the uk even the summer involves clouds like that now got a couple of birds to put on and some flowers then we have a very busy but very done tea light other than the bit that's going to hold the candle which I shall show you momentarily let's put some birds on first this was always going to be the quickest bit was to just put on everything that I made but it's actually some of the most fun the last assembly has to be my favorite of all the things all the bits that you can actually do in the process uh, my birds look quite scruffy but that doesn't matter people once it's on people get the idea that that's what you're aiming at you just got to make something roughly wing shaped and roughly body shaped and you're you'll be amazed what you can get away with. A weird thing that people don't really notice as a someone, if you don't make stuff, you think the flaws and things that look wrong to you is exactly what the artist sees, and it's not. We see so many more things wrong with the stuff that we make than any of any perspective buyer ever would we're a lot more critical of our work and it's because you are making it you just notice everything and once i accepted that the only thing that's ever going to be perfect is if there's such a thing as god i'm not even getting into that one but certainly no human artist is going to achieve perfection. It ain't going to happen. And if people want perfect, they will get a factory made thing. They're expecting slight imperfections and uniqueness from your work. So don't, don't be overly critical. You don't need to spend 10 years trying to get the best cloud in the universe in your mind because you'll actually find 
that the five minute version was liked just as well by everyone else and you haven't actually drove yourself insane doing it so these little flowers they are small and fiddly so i would probably say let's give the exact knife a go at freeing some of these up and putting them on there we go right let's go around in some of the gaps just put some flowers in and they don't have to be exactly where you plan them because flowers are known for their random positioning which is useful but we are almost there with this it came together very quick I thought I'd be at this a lot longer than I am actually doing so which is good really because you know you don't want to be sat there watching me spend a year on this oh well the dot came out of that one but I've got a lot of flowers that I can use so that one's just going to have to go as rough scrappy here we go Whoop. back up here we are trying to put a flower on the bottom there we go So, can you see I'm putting little pink flowers in some of the gaps? Oh, right. There we go. There are little pink flowers in the gaps. So I will, and that's the birds on since I'm showing it around. There we go. I am going to tidy up. Oh, there we go. That way. I am going to tidy up the tree shapes in the gap. We've got rabbits, some more birds flying around, and the pond, and we're back to the sheep. So, I'm going to put more flowers on. What I want to do now, just to show you the next and quite important bit. Get yourself one of your tea lights, put it in the middle, get a pin tool, and you just want to roughly draw around it. Yeah? Like that. Very, very faint, very rough, just so that you can see the size of the candle. Now, some of your off cuts is what I find best for this. I am going to make a long twisted sausage to go around that line with a little bit of space so that it holds the candles in place rather than them falling off sideways. If you don't put this in, you, you don't have to but I find it's less secure and you can have your tea light wobble around too much. So what I've done is I've got a bit of the off cut. I've laid it over on its side so that you've got both colours. I'm just going to twist like I did with the twisty clay. Keep going, keep going. Make it quite thin like this all the way along. you don't want it to be massively chunky it doesn't look good so now use this as your side guide I'm going to take the end off of this that's going to need to come around like that it's kind of like that yeah then that little loop is going to go into the middle now you can do this at any stage I just do it whenever I remember so now that was at the end but it doesn't have to be now you need to make sure you try and center that ring properly and then once you're happy with it just push it down 
so then when people use it they can just put their tea light in the middle and it holds it central does that make sense if anyone's got any questions you're always welcome to ask by the way if it's not if you're not viewing this on live you can always put questions in the box underneath and i always try and get back so we're here we're done all i need to do is add a few more flowers and just tidy up the cutouts that i've done of trees and make sure that any errant bits of cat fur that sort of stuff gets taken off so what i would do is next week i will show you this once i've baked it and i've varnished it so you get to see the finished thing but yeah what do you reckon tea light for new beginnings very busy but i kind of love it like that it makes it more interesting what time are we we're at seven o'clock which is perfect so i'm going to head off thank you everyone for coming and what was that <sighs> sorry what was just put in the comments fairy hedgehog says sorry fairy hedgehog i didn't read said, that can you show the sides more? oh can i show the sides more thank you right i'm going to put little flowers in there you go and then i'm gonna head off finish straightening it up and bake it up Bye, bye, bye everyone thank you i'm glad you like it once it gets finished it is going to end up in my etsy shop so you will be able to buy it if you wish the competition doesn't need the actual piece they want a photo of it so because it's got stuff all around all sides i'm going to film it once i've got it finished baked and varnished okay um i hope you all have a great week and i look forward to seeing you next wednesday okay bye